I'm going to take a few moments now to talk about possessive adjectives in German. Now, what I'm going to do in this presentation is look at a brief introduction to possessive adjectives in English first, and from there move over to an examination of possessive adjectives in German. Uh, we're going to notice that possessive adjectives are going to be uh, declined in a similar fashion to the indefinite pronouns that we've already examined. Uh, you'll recall that indefinite pronouns are, uh, an indefinite pronoun is the word ein, for instance, uh, ein Auto, a uh, car. Um, then I'm going to conclude the presentation with examples of how possessive adjectives are used in German. So, um, a possessive adjective in English is what you see on your screen, uh, my, as in that is my car. Um, we have, just as a way to review, we have a demonstrative pronoun that the uh, verb is in the third person singular. We have a form of sein, which means that this, uh, the, the uh, noun that the verb modifies, or the noun that is used in connection with the verb, is going to be in the nominative case. Now, let's take a look at the same sentence in German. Das is mein Auto. That is my car. Again, we have the same thing. A demonstrative pronoun, a verb, a noun in the nominative, and a possessive adjective. Um, one thing that you'll notice about mine as you study possessive adjectives is that the endings that they take are very similar to the endings that a in, that an indefinite pronoun will take. In fact, it forms the same pattern. We have the Oklahoma box that you see on your screen here in the nominative and the accusative, with the only change occurring in the masculine, which moves from mine to meinen. Everything else stays the same, and this is indeed the same pattern we see with the indefinite article ein. Ein goes to einen, whereas everything else, eine, ein, and eine, remains the same in the feminine, neuter, and the plural. So, we're really learning nothing new in the sense of conjugation or uh, declination patterns. Uh, the pattern, the Oklahoma box, stays the same. Uh, some of the possessive pronouns, or the possessive adjectives, excuse me, have ein at the root, mine being an example. Um, the ones that you see on your screen, mine, dein, sein, all have ein as the root. So this is sort of a powerful reminder that when we use possessive adjectives in German, we will decline them in the same way that we do the indefinite articles. Um, however, you also notice on the screen that there are other possessive adjectives that do not have the ein word at the root of the possessive adjective. Uh, this was a little bit confusing for me when I was learning German because it, well, it threw me off. I didn't see the ein at the in the stem of the possessive adjective, and so I thought, well, maybe it would be declined differently. However, even though the possessive adjectives do not have, all of them do not have ein in the stem, they are still declined in this, they are still declined in the same way, the same pattern that you saw for ein, uh, the Oklahoma box. So let's take a look at some of these um, in a sentence and how we would use them. So er hat meinen Tisch. Now we have the subject of the sentence er, which is going to be the nominative. Now this subject is doing something. He's having something. That's the third person singular verb hat. Now since there is an action in the sentence, in the the subject of the sentence is performing something. Um, another object in the sentence is going to have to accept or uh, assume or receive that action and that will be meinen Tisch. Therefore meinen Tisch will be in the accusative case. It will be an accusative masculine object and this the, this accusativeness of the 
of the noun of the object will be manifested in the possessive adjective. Note that it's not mine, but it is mine-in, indicating the accusative case. Now, we have a similar sentence, except this time we have replaced mine with ear or her. Now, I'm using this slide as an example to show you that even though the possessive adjective is changed, it doesn't have a ein at in, at the, in the stem of the possessive adjective, we're still going to decline it in the same manner. It still receives an en ending. Why does it receive an en ending? Because it is still an accusative object. It is still a masculine accusative object that receives the action of being had. Therefore, it needs to show that it's an accusative, uh, that, the, that the possessive adjective that modifies that noun is going to be accusative, and it has to have an en ending on. However, the stem of the possessive adjective is different because it, it doesn't refer anymore to my table or mine, it refers to hers or ear. So um, stems can change, stems of possessive adjectives can change, however the endings of those possessive adjectives will always be done in the pattern we are familiar with and that is that Oklahoma box, the way we decline indefinite articles, the ein words. Now, let's take a look at the one exception that we have in, uh, or sort of a, uh, a general weird case in the possessive adjectives, and that would be oya. Now, um, oya is a second person plural possessive adjective, so y'alls. Uh, we had the same sentence, he has, and then we have the table. So he has the table. Table receives the action, therefore it's going to be accusative. We have the en ending on the uh, on the stem of the possessive adjective oya. However, you'll notice that something's a little different with oya, and um, when we tack endings on to oya, we're going to have to change the stem a little bit. Um, let's take a closer look at that. Um, we have the normal default way to write oya, as you see in step one, e-u-e-r. Now, when we, in step two, want to add an ending to oya, if we want to use it, for example, to as we saw in the previous slide to modify an accusative masculine noun, we're going to have to tack an ending on. However, oyer is a little difficult to pronounce. Um, oyeren, um, oyerer, if we wanted to add a feminine. It doesn't roll easy off the tongue. In fact, the, the R's kind of get all caught up in the back of your throat and tighten your tongue up into a knot and it's difficult to speak. So Germans are like everyone else and are bound by the limitations of their biology and so if, if in any instance we want to add an ending to oya, we're going to do what we do in step three. We're going to drop the E out. Not the first D, but the second E in the stem. So it's going to be oer plus the ending. So the end result, you see, is going to be changes in the feminine and the plural in both, in both cases, nominative and accusative, and the masculine accusative. Uh, oer, oer, feminine, nominative, and accusative. Same thing, plural, oer. Uh, it's a lot more easy to pronounce than oira. It uh, rolls off the tongue a lot more easily and easier to pronounce. So, um, to summarize, possessive adjectives show, well, possession. 
uh, they belong to me. They belong. Something belongs to me. Something belongs to you. Um, it will be all of the possessive adjectives will be declined in the same way as we would do the uh, indefinite article ein, and that is if uh, we have the Oklahoma box pattern. Um, even if the stem of the possessive adjective doesn't have ein in it, we're still going to follow this pattern. And then finally, the only one that sort of deviates slightly from this pattern is the possessive adjective euer, or y'alls. So, possessive adjectives. Um, the example, and I thought that was going to be the last slide, we have the example, er hat euren Tisch. He has y'alls table.